I don't know about you guys, but I'm constantly seeing masterclass ads, whether it's on Instagram or whether it's on YouTube, they're absolutely everywhere. But did you guys know that they also have a phenomenal SEO strategy in place? Today, we're gonna take a look at exactly what they're doing, how they're doing it, and how you guys can apply some of those things to your own websites. So we're gonna start off by taking a quick look at the overview of their traffic. So for the masterclass.com domain, they're getting around 13.4 million in monthly organic traffic. Obviously this is an estimate, which is a very, very high amount. So a really high number of organic keywords as well, a decent number of referring domains and a domain rating that I would honestly expect to be higher given how much traffic they're getting. But anyways, I wanna take you guys through a quick breakdown of their subfolders. And what we're gonna see is that it's completely different to other SEO strategy breakdowns that we've done before. Because usually what we'd see is that there were a variety of different sections that were each bringing in a chunk of traffic for those websites, right? For masterclass, we're gonna see that it's completely different. We have this main subfolder that's bringing in 97% of the traffic. So basically all the organic traffic that this website is getting, it is because of this subfolder right here. So masterclass.com slash articles, which is basically the blog section of their website. And if we take a look at some of the top pages, we're gonna see the type of keywords that they're ranking for, which again, will be slightly different than other SEO strategies breakdowns that I've done in the past. I'm just going to quickly add a filter here once this loads. And I just want to take a look at the United States just to simplify things here a little bit. So we're going to see that a lot of these top pages are bringing a significant amount of traffic, 27,000 in monthly organic traffic, and they're targeting a lot of very informational and very top of the funnel keywords, right? Some topics that are slightly more risque, but we're going to see keywords like themes in literature, how many teaspoons in a tablespoon, types of poetry, what colors make brown, a lot of very informational keywords that when I was doing this breakdown, I honestly wasn't sure how they were connecting it back to their courses and how they're actually making use of all this traffic, right? So how to write a book, smart casual, how to clean strawberries. So we're going to take a look at this article and we're going to see right away how they're making use of this insane amount of traffic that they're getting, right? So as soon as we land on this page, we're seeing right away that there's a massive call to action right now where they're talking about one of their courses, right? So Alice Waters teaches the art of home cooking. And before we can actually get into the actual meat of the article, we're gonna see that there's another CTA right here. So now they're talking about Massimo Bottura and Gordon Ramsay and all these other chefs. Again, another little call to action right here and then we can scroll down and actually see the content right so what they're doing here is they're leveraging a lot of this very informational very high funnel traffic coming in for those very informational keywords and always plugging in a related course and i think this is the important thing here they're not plugging in a digital marketing course on a landing page that's talking about food or talking about cooking right they're showing you the most relevant course for that blog post that you landed on. And I'd actually, I'd love to know the conversion rates on some of these blog posts, but I'm sure they're doing quite well. And now what I wanna do is I wanna break down three main ways that Masterclass is getting this huge amount of traffic, how they're doing it, and how you can as well. So the number one thing here is they're publishing a lot of content and they're publishing content consistently. If we do a quick analysis of the amount of content that they've published and that Google has indexed, we're going to see that it's actually a lot of content. So if I just quickly do a site search um, and I have it right here because I previously searched it before, we're going to see that for this subfolder, which is that main subfolder that's bringing all that traffic, which is also their blog, they have around 20,000 plus indexed articles, right? This is a huge amount of content. And the interesting thing here, guys, is that because they have courses in a variety of different niches, a bunch of different topics, they can publish content about all those different topics. And that allows them to publish an insane amount of content at a very consistent rate. This is one of the main difficulties in having a very niche down website. You can only publish so much content until you run out of ideas. So Masterclass is leveraging the fact that they have a very large breadth of topics to cover, right? So they're publishing a lot of content and this is helping them bring in that really big chunk of traffic. But publishing a lot of content isn't actually what's gonna make us rank, it's the actual content and how it's structured. 
And the interesting thing here, guys, is the structure. And Masterclass is structuring their content phenomenally. And if you go back to this top pages analysis, I want you guys to take a look at the amount of featured snippets. So we're looking for these single quotes right here on the side. Those are featured snippets that each of these pages is getting. And if we scroll all the way to the top and I just do a quick scroll, we're gonna see how many of these have featured snippets. It's a significant amount of featured snippets and I can keep scrolling and we'll see a bunch more. But the main thing here is that this isn't an accident. If you guys remember my featured snippet video, which you guys can find right here, we know that there's a lot we can do to improve our chances of getting a featured snippet. So let's take a look at this article again, and we're gonna see that there actually isn't a lot of content on this article, but the content that's present is very, very well structured. So there's a couple main sections here. We have how to clean strawberries, and then we have a second section, three tips for cleaning strawberries. And that's basically it, right? But again, let's take a look at this specific content. So we have an H2 right here, and then we have a list of the different ideas that we need to answer that question, right? So how to clean strawberries, we have a one to four, and then we have those main ideas in bold, and Google may or may not pick up that featured snippet, but at least we're improving those chances, right? Another thing we could do is make sure that every list item is an H3 if we have an H2 for that heading right above it, right? So they've created list type snippet baits. And then if we check out another article, we're gonna see the exact same thing, right? So now we're taking a look at how to write a book, complete step-by-step -step guide. Again, we're gonna see that heading, what to consider, and then we're gonna see that list. And again, how to write a book, the same exact structure. Again, that heading and then that list. And I just checked this out and these are H3. Right, so that structure is very well made. So this isn't the only type of snippet bait that they have in their articles. I recommend you guys go into the website, check it out. They're doing a lot of really interesting things with their content that you guys should apply to your website as well. But the main thing here is always thinking about how we could potentially get a featured snippet with our content. Is there a question that we could answer in a snippet bait type format that is gonna help Google see that that could be a featured snippet? So we always need to keep that in mind. And then guys, the final thing I wanna talk about is how good masterclass.com is at leveraging their most popular content. So if you go back to Ahrefs, there's actually this page where we can take a look at the top content. And this is a mix of pages that have, that have gotten a lot of backlinks and they're also being shared a lot on Twitter and on Pinterest, right? So there's actually a great page just to see what's the best content in terms of authority and in terms of shareability, right? And so we obviously have the homepage that's gonna be number one, but then we're gonna see that a lot of these pages here, and by the way, just as a quick breakdown, so this is the referring domains, this is the number of uh, Twitter and Pinterest shares, and then we have a social power score, right? What we're gonna see here, guys, is that none of these pages are actual article pages. Most of these pages are just course pages, which makes sense, right? If we have Gordon Ramsay or any other influencer type persona on a course, that's gonna be the page that's gonna get most shares. That's most likely gonna be the page that gets the most organic links. And so if we click into any of these, for example, we can click into the Gordon Ramsay one, that page is getting a lot of links, a lot of authority, and we scroll down all the way to the bottom. We're gonna pass a lot of these sections here. Under the FAQs, we're gonna see this little section of related articles. And now what they're doing here is again, we have this Gordon Ramsay course it's getting a lot of links, a lot of authority, and they're making sure to include a bunch of internal links to smaller articles that need that authority to rank a little bit better, right? So to summarize, guys, there's three main things. So number one, guys, they're publishing a lot of content. This is also something that we can do and we should be doing consistently, right? Number two, their on-page on this content is actually the thing that's bringing in all of that traffic because they're structuring their content very, very well, getting a lot of featured snippets and getting a lot of traffic as a result. And at number three, guys, they're very aware of those pages that are getting the most amount of backlinks, most amount of shares, and they're making sure that they have solid internal links onto pages that might need that authority. And this is something that also applies to our website. We're usually gonna have a homepage that's generating a lot of backlinks, and so we wanna make sure that we have internal links from the homepage onto other important articles that might have traffic potential. If you guys wanna take a look at that featured snippet video again, you guys can find it right here. Really great breakdown of all the different featured snippet opportunities we can generate with our content. And that's it guys, thanks for staying till the end. I'll see you guys in the next one.